Well, it's no secret that America's journalists are getting more homogenous. Even if they look different, they overwhelmingly live in the same cities, hail from the same backgrounds, and most important, have pretty much the same ideas. Recently, White House Correspondents Association Jeff Mason of Reuters told us that journalists are still capable of covering the news fairly. Watch. The people standing in the briefing room who are telling us on camera, I'm just here to report the facts. And then you read their Twitter feed, and they're like, basically, I hate Trump. And this is a fascist takeover of the country. I mean, they are out in the open liberal. And I would an, think you have a as, specific example? Well, we've done like 15 shows on this. Well, no outlet better embodies how journalism has changed in the past 20 years than clickbait kingpin BuzzFeed.com, one of the most valuable news outlets in the world. Are they part of the new news bubble? Who better to ask than the editor-in-chief of BuzzFeed, Ben Smith. He joins us tonight. Hey, Ben, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. Congrats on the show, the book, the memification. <laughs> we don't even know what that means, but I will accept your congratulations. I don't know what King, the kingpin thing meant either. So and I will, I will respond with the obvious question, which is, hasn't Politico just proved what the rest of us knew was true for a long time, which is, basically everybody who runs America's news organizations comes from the same world. According to Politico, 90% of all online news employees live in counties that voted for Hillary Clinton. You could have guessed that, but doesn't that lead to a certain kind of coverage, of course? I mean, I think what he showed was the kind of tragedy that you've seen over the last 20 years of the collapse of these great news organizations all across the country. Right. You know, big, big, big regional papers, you know, in Cleveland and Chicago. I mean, I think, you know, we certainly, I think our staff's more diverse than it's ever been. But we think about, you know, regional diversity, too. I think that matters. We just hired a great political reporter in Cleveland, Henry Gomez, partly because I think it is important to kind of have people outside the Beltway, outside New York. Right, but it's, it's not just New York and Washington and L.A., it's specifically liberal counties. It's places that voted for Hillary Clinton, and that doesn't mean that all those employees voted for Hillary Clinton, but actually they did, because survey after survey has shown it's overwhelmingly a one-party state. I think, I think that Politico piece um, said that something like 75% of the people they looked at were registered independents or weren't registered voters. Right. But registration, not necessarily a marker for anything. I mean, another way to look at it would be the White House press corps has precisely, according to Politico as well, zero registered Republicans in it. Now, maybe, you know, there are some Republicans floating around there. Who knows? But it's still a much smaller number, I think it's safe to say, than the country at large. And so it doesn't actually represent the country it covers. Oh. And why is that not a problem? I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I think in a way the deeper problem I mean, it pulls from people like us, you know, educated people who live in cities who wanted to go into journalism as well. Like there's a lot of, a lot of different ways that it's a homogenous group. I think the best you can do is, is, is try to be fair in your coverage and look at the coverage, not look at the, I mean, but I, but I think it was a great piece by Jack, totally reasonable thing to observe. No, but, but hold on, but you wouldn't say, and it's not exactly the same thing, but you wouldn't ever say something like that about racial or ethnic diversity. You wouldn't say, well, my newsroom is 100% middle-aged white men, but we're going we're gonna to kind of do our best to understand perspectives different from ours. You'd say, no way, man. Get me HR on the line. We're going to diversify this newsroom. Why not do that with ideology? Well, I'm not so regional in ideology is exactly the same thing, but I actually I, mean, I, think, I think conservatives make good. I've always looked for conservative political reporters. We, uh, we stole our political editor from the, the great Washington Free Beacon. I actually think that's, I think ideological, I, I don't disagree with you on ideological diversity at all. So there was this piece, I'm sure you saw this in Business Insider, which is pretty unbelievable, um, by one of your former employees who's gone on to become a kind of pro-Trump activist online. He didn't start that way. But he recounts what it was like to work at BuzzFeed. And I'm, I'm quoting him. He says, I was talking to my colleagues about the new Justin Bieber album. And I said, I love this album. I love Bieber. He's my spirit animal. And someone came up to me at BuzzFeed and said, hey, bro, you can't say spirit animal. That's culturally appropriating Native American culture. And it's not cool. And he said, I didn't really think this happened, but it does happen at BuzzFeed. That doesn't seem like a culture of free inquiry to me. So that was that, that he was an employee of our Los Angeles Entertainment Division. Right. You know, I did actually try to report out that anecdote because it sounds pretty preposterous. I don't think it happened. I was not there. Oh. More broadly, that story. Uh, his name is it's a guy. His name is ba he goes under the name Baked Alaska. His name right. is, is Tim. I mean, I don't think he was not somebody who was. I think persecuted for his conservative beliefs. This is somebody who who I think obviously did not have a great experience at BuzzFeed. Left BuzzFeed for a while hung out in the sort of pro-Trump movement and then started tweeting about how Jews control the media and got tossed out of the pro-Trump movement. Okay. I, I don't really see a straight line between well, so he may be, not having a great experience in our office and tweeting about the Jews. He may be a wacko, but I'm still pretty sympathetic. I don't know anything about him beyond this, but I'm, this sounds right to me having been around this a lot. He says, I got a lot of dirty looks and people stopped inviting me to meetings when I said I was voting for Trump. 
it was like I was a heretic. Nobody wanted to talk to me. All their opinions about me changed. That sounds right to me. How many Trump voters do you think you have on staff at BuzzFeed, would you say? I don't know. I do not ask people about their ideology. Right. I, but I, I obviously agree with you. I don't think there are a lot of, conserv a lot of, a lot of journalists voting for Trump. The, right. um, but, I don't, but again, you just told a story. I don't think that happened, that he was left out of meetings for his ideology. That certainly doesn't happen in our news operation. So you don't think if someone came out in the middle of a BuzzFeed meeting and said, by the way, I'm an evangelical and I think abortion's murder, and I'm voting for Donald Trump. It was like, oh yeah, that's cool. You know, just like a, another diverse member of our staff. You think they would say that? Yeah, I think people are very respectful of the conservatives on our staff, and not they wouldn't say they would have heated. I mean, they're you know, we're journalists. We yell at each other all the time. We're right. not, but nobody. They're not, they're not shrinking violets. No, no, of course. But I mean, I let's mean it's be fine, totally right? real. If you said, I'm going this afternoon to get my concealed carry permit, and then on Saturday I'm going to go protest a Planned Parenthood because I think Jesus wants me to, you really think? People wouldn't say, maybe out loud, certainly to themselves, this guy's a freak, and I don't want him here. I mean, maybe the question that, is whether I'm going to be shunned for going on your show. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> well, you're the editor, so there's nothing they can do. Yeah, nothing they can do. It's true. <laughs> That's right. But behind your back, they're probably saying, why is he on? With that dangerous authoritarian Tucker Carlson, who knows? Who, you see the point, though. You know, I though. think I, I, you know, I'm not saying that. I, I guess I'm not arguing with you about the way people vote, the way they lean. But people just don't get into the business of reporting. I never did because we are political activists. It's just not the first, second, or third things on our minds. My first gig was at a conservative newspaper in New York. Right. I also worked for a left-leaning New York newspaper. Worked for Politico that has no particular ideology. But you know, I came into this because I wanted to report, to find stuff out, to tell stories. I think that's true of most reporters. And I think I believe that. political activists who who, in good faith, accuse journalists of being activists or basically projecting. They say, I'm primarily motivated by politics. These journalists must also be. I just don't think that's not the newsroom conversation. And I don't think any of these newsroomers, they're not most of them. Well, I, I think there's some exceptions, but you're, I think you're generally right. The problem, as you know, is the problem that pro-diversity activists always point to, and that's an unconscious bias in taking your assumptions with you and not examining them, and that's why employers, and particularly you, spend so much time trying to, quote, diversify the way your newsroom looks. And I'm just saying, are you making the same effort to bring diversity of experience? And we both know you're not. And my question is why? I mean, we think a lot about, about hiring people, but, you know, both who are based outside the big cities and who come from a wide variety of backgrounds. So I don't know why you, would, why you think that's not the case, because it, it certainly is. And I, think, and I do think that matters. Really? I, mean, I, think, I think one of the things that you really see in, in the, where one of the places this comes through most clearly in, in media is TV coverage. You know, the, the, show, the HBO shows that get all the coverage in the New York Times and in a lot of the media are, just not, are not necessarily, you know, the shows that are widely viewed, which might be CSI. And I think like, that's a place where we, you know, in a kind of broad sense, think about trying to make sure we're writing about the, the show, the, okay. the culture that people, that people pay, that real people are paying attention to. But, but for sure, I think like most journalists are college educated. I think most journalists, okay, you know, but, had a certain but, set of, like, a set of experiences that have, leave them with huge blind spots. But, but last question, have true. you ever heard anybody at BuzzFeed say, you know what, I just think abortion's murder and I don't think it should be legal? A lot of the country feels that way. Do I have colleagues who oppose abortion rights? Absolutely. Not abortion rights, abortion itself. Yes, absolutely. Well, good for you. Ben, thanks for coming on. Thank you.